Yeah. I want the world to see one more phony Christian walk away. Phony Christians. Let's let's entitle this segment another phony Christian. You're getting it's getting boring. It's getting boring all the phony Christians out here in Hickory, North Carolina. You cannot record the by yes I can. There's no expectation of privacy in a public setting. Another phony Christian. All the phony Christians. Bring me an atheist. Bring me an atheist. Yeah, take advice. Take advice from him. <laughs> Bring me an atheist. That's what I want. Go in there and round up, round up some atheists that we can talk to. They might actually repent. You're so busy. You're so busy uh, having security in your little sinner's prayer that you said back in Bible camp that makes you think you can keep sinning till you're 90 years old, getting drunk just as much as every other heathen out here, looking at porn, being a foul mouth and vile. What a shame. That's why the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Now booze, booze certainly shows that. You destroy your liver, it leads to death. Drive your car, crash it into a tree, it leads to death. Drive your car into some innocent family's minivan, it leads to their death. What a shame. What a shame that you love your booze more than you love obedience to a holy and righteous God. But you think God is not going to keep his promise to put sinners into hell. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, where we get this banner from, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10 says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither idolater, nor adulterer, nor fornicator, nor homosexual offender, nor drunkard, nor thief, nor slanderer, nor swindler will inherit the kingdom of God. We got your Bible app on your phone. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Folks, if you're on that list, you're in a lot of trouble with God. If you are on that list even once, you are in a lot of trouble with God. So who's ready? Who's willing to get off of that list and get right with a holy and righteous God. Who's willing to repent? Sir, are you willing to repent? What's that? If I am what? Oh, I removed the pain from my own. Somebody wants to ask, could I spare some change for gas? I need to get myself away from this place. I said, yeah, what a concept. I could use a little fuel myself in we to preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, I no, I mean, if you're on that list, you're in a lot of trouble with God. I haven't, I haven't falsely accused anyone of a sin that they weren't willing to admit to. These people are proud. Do we have any proud perverts out there? Do we have any guys that are proud to be perverts? Look at that guy. Look at the hands go up. Always, always. So I'm not, I'm not accusing them of being perverts. I'm asking if there are any perverts out here, and they proudly raise their hand. Never fails. So, uh, so they're a sexual pervert. Now, the Bible says that fornicators, homosexual offenders, adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, if somebody is a porn watcher, they're a sexual pervert, they're in trouble with God, they need to repent, be saved through Christ. Stop sinning. If they are having sex outside of marriage, they're a sexual pervert, they need to repent, uh, be saved. If they're a homosexual, they're a sexual pervert, they need to repent of that wickedness, get saved through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, go and sin no Here's more. Here's to you, buddy. It's very simple. Who's proud of being drunk out here? anybody of anything. They proudly admit it. They're more than happy to admit it. So, do you have any other questions? Alright. All right. Uh, you can still repent. There's still time. There's still time to repent. God doesn't want you to go to hell, but you will if you don't repent. What about it? 
Uh, not if you're still sitting. He told the woman, go into adultery, go and sin no more. He actually meant it. They were about to stone the woman with real physical stones. People will tell us, the views without sin cast the first stone. We're not throwing stones, sorry. We're not throwing stones, we're throwing life mines, we're throwing life preservers. Uh, but they were going to kill the woman with real physical stones. So when he told her to go and sin no more, I don't think he was saying it nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I think he actually meant it. I think it was actually serious. Uh, anyone that thinks they might be a little bit Oh, please. We're in the Bible Belt of America in the 21st century. The, the reason, if somebody in this crowd is not saved, it's not because they haven't heard the message 10 billion times. They're not saved because they love their sin more than they love their own eternal soul. What a shame. And we're trying to wake people up to that fact. We're trying to wake people up to the fact of how stupid it is that they love their sin more than they love their own eternal soul. Now, the Bible does say that there is pleasure in sin, but it's only for a season. So the devil's not dumb. He knows that there's pleasure in sin, but it's only for a season. And in the end, the way to that sin is death. Now, drunkenness, drunkenness feels good. I used to be a drunkard. I used to like getting drunk. I used to, I, I used to love getting drunk. You know, it makes you feel good until you have too much and then you get sick and hungover and all. But, uh, you know, getting a little tipsy, it makes you feel good. But God says it, that I had to make a decision. The sins I was committing made my flesh feel good. Your flesh, your flesh just wants to be satisfied. Your flesh is neither sinful nor, nor righteous. It's just chemicals. It's just a bunch of chemicals, mean skin, bones. So your, sin, your flesh is neither sinful nor righteous. It's your will, it's your choices, your, your free will that makes you either righteous or, or wicked. Uh, and we want to, and we want to tell you know, your flesh just wants to be satisfied. Your flesh wants sensation and to be to be filled with food and water and, and have good sensations. Your body doesn't care if uh, if you're satisfied legally in a godly way or in an ungodly way. It just wants to be satisfied. My, if my body is thirsty, it doesn't care if I steal water and drink it or if I buy water with my own money. My body just wants water. But uh, my free will has a, has a choice to satisfy my body's desire in a godly way. And, uh, well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to answer your question. Uh, so drunkenness does make your body feel good. I used to like getting drunk. But I had to make a decision. God says I can't be drunk or have sex outside of marriage or, or uh, be a porn watching or anything like that. Uh, and even though those things gave my flesh pleasure, I had to make a decision. Do I choose? Do I prefer the, the momentary pleasures of the flesh? Or do I want to be with God for all of eternity uh, and be a part of his kingdom? So I made a decision. Even though sins, the sins I love gave my flesh pleasure, I made a decision that I would give up those sins, even though it meant giving away some temporary pleasure of the flesh that sin does give, uh, because I want to obey God. Jesus said, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said in John 14, 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. Any other questions? Uh, we're not here. We're not here telling people to come to our church. We want people to come to salvation. We don't even go to the same church. Uh, I want people. I want people to come to salvation. That's all. That's all. It's important. But most of the churches. Most of the churches are about to fall apart. Once gay marriage gets approved in this nation and they lose their 501c3 status, most of the churches in this nation are about to fall apart. So uh, that's what we want. We want you to get saved before things get returned really bad because it's reaching a point where God is going to be, God is setting up a scenario where it's going to be very easy to tell the real Christians from the phonies. The real Christians from the phonies is about to be determined and shown. It's about to be shown who are the phony Christians because, uh, because it's just the same-sex marriage issue. Uh, you're going to be castigated. You're going to be hated. And Jesus said, Jesus said, all of those who follow me will suffer persecution. He also said, do not judge others. Uh, no, I've removed the beam from my own eye so I can see clearly to take the speck out of my brother's eye. Jesus never said, if you can't judge. Actually, in John 7, the Catholic, in church? Uh, the Catholic Church is wicked. You need to flee the Catholic Church. If you're a Catholic, you need to flee the Catholic who, Church. Who wrote the Bible? 
Uh, holy men of old inspired by the Holy Spirit. It certainly was not Catholics Once who wrote the, the Catholic Bible. Church, the Catholics are doing... No, the Catholic, no, they did not. The Catholic Church, the Catholic Church, uh, the Catholic Church is uh, doing its best to uh, deny the Bible and keep you biblically Ill, Ill, uh, ignorant. I grew up a Catholic. I grew up a Catholic. Most of my family, no. No, they did not. No, they did not. The only thing the Catholic Church did was added seven books to it, uh, which were never approved by the Jews, were never used by the Jews. The Catholics believe in purgatory, which is a lie of the devil. The purgatory, uh, uh, most, uh, almost, almost all of the books of the Bible were written by Jews, with the exception of Luke. Uh, Luke, uh, Luke uh, wrote the Gospel of Luke and Acts, and uh, Luke was a Gentile. Um, I can't remember what other books might have been written uh, by non-Jews, obviously the ones before Abraham and all, but uh, now most, most of the Bible was written by Jews, with the exception of like Luke and Acts. There might be something else that, that was written by a non-Jew. How many people had a religion at the time? A uh, religion period. Uh, and everyone did. Everyone knows that God exists by conscience and creation. At the, time the, Bible, Jesus, the Bible starts out, the in the Jesus. beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So uh, Christianity is the first religion. That's the first it predates that's any, not, it predates not, any not, other religion. Christianity on, didn't start when Jesus that's took not, flesh 2,000 years ago. Christianity starts out Genesis 1-1. Christianity starts out in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's when Christianity started. I don't know of any religion that goes back farther than that. So we come out here, not, not to ask you to be religious, but to ask you to be broken over your sin, humble before the Lord Jesus Christ, so you would cry out to Him for mercy. So let's read some Bible. How do we know? How do we know? If, I don't know why everybody here today thinks hell is so funny. Here's how God describes hell. Here's how the Bible describes hell. Uh, it's described in Matthew 18 as a place of everlasting fire and everlasting punishment. Uh, in Jude 1, Jude, verse 6, is everlasting chain. Uh, Mark is eternal damnation. In Hebrews, it's described as eternal judgment, eternal fire. It's described as eternal, uh, unquenchable fire, the blackness and darkness forever. Hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, it's a place of torments, a place of sorrows, a place of everlasting destruction. It's a bottomless pit. It's a place of no rest. It's a place of unsatisfied desires. Hell is a place of memory and regret. Hell is a, since hell is a place where God's blessed, blessed and glorious presence is absent, it's also a place that's void of love. For God is love. There is no peace because God is peace. There is no rest. There is no protection in hell. For God, for God is our protector. Uh, in hell, every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom no variableness, no shadow of turning. So there is no goodness. There is no light in hell. Therefore, everyone in hell is alone because friendship is a gift from God. There is absolutely no affection or caring or understanding from anyone. Hell is a place that is void of all good things. So we come out here today and we're willing. We're willing to stand here looking like fools to implore you. To implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. To, to uh, understand that you have sinned not just against some fellow man or against yourself or whatever. You have sinned against a holy and righteous God. That's what David said. David said, I've sinned against you and you alone, Lord. He understood that even though even though he had uh, sex with Bathsheba and had Uriah the Hittite killed, and he certainly sinned against them, that his sin was basically against God himself. And that is who your sins are against. They're against God himself. Uh, why is no one broken over the fact that you've sinned against God and uh, he has every right to keep you out of heaven? He